Enjoy this movie, then visit BrainPop.com for much more. What are you talking about? I didn't wear your hat. That's not my hair. Okay, you got me. Dear Tim and Moby, do all animals have DNA? From Kevin. Yes, they do, Kevin. So do all plants, fungi, algae, and bacteria. Dinosaurs and other extinct life forms had DNA too. It's the basis for all life on Earth. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. It's a complex molecule that kind of looks like a spiral staircase. This double helix shape forms into long strings. In humans and other multicellular life, DNA is unique to each individual, kind of like a fingerprint. One copy contains the complete instructions for building an organism. It's long. Stretched all the way out, a single set of human DNA is over six feet, and there's an identical copy inside the nucleus of nearly every cell in the body. Well, you can think of cells as miniature factories. But instead of cars or cell phones, these factories build proteins. That's the all-purpose construction material for life. Proteins can be molded to do just about anything. DNA tells your cells which proteins to build and how to build them. It tells cells in your eyes to form out of crystallines. These transparent proteins let light shine through so you can see. DNA tells your red blood cells to build a protein called hemoglobin. It captures oxygen as blood passes through the lungs. Crystallins, hemoglobin, and other proteins are precision machines. They're made of hundreds, sometimes thousands, of tiny parts. If just one of those parts gets messed up, the protein may not work. Human DNA holds instructions for building thousands of different proteins, used in more than 200 kinds of cell, forming dozens of different tissues which all come together to make you. All of this information is stored within an incredibly simple code. It's built into DNA's structure in molecules we call bases. There are four different bases, and they stick together like puzzle pieces, always in the same pairs. They are cytosine, guanine, adenine, and thymine. You can think of bases as words in a special kind of language. They can be arranged into millions of different sequences, like sentences that spell out instructions for building any kind of protein. A section of DNA that codes for a single protein is called a gene. The average gene is thousands of base pairs long, and humans have more than 20,000 genes. But these protein coding sections represent only a tiny fraction of our complete DNA. The function of the rest, the non-coding DNA, is not entirely understood. To fit neatly inside a cell, the DNA spiral is wound into a coil, which is wound into an even bigger coil, which is wound into a structure called a chromosome. Up close, it looks like a big tangle, but it's actually precisely organized. This strong, flexible configuration keeps our personal info safe. Yeah, chromosomes come in pairs because of how we reproduce. In each of our 23 pairs, one's from the mother and the other's from the father. Each of those is a shuffled up version of the corresponding pair in your parents. So even though all your genes come from your parents, your chromosomes are unique. That's why family members tend to look similar, but have lots of differences too. Eye color, hair type, and facial features are genetic traits. You inherit them in the genes you get from your parents. The number of chromosomes differs by species, kind of randomly. Humans have 46. Lobsters have 100. Corn has 20. Researchers have mapped the human genome, the complete sequence for human DNA. Comparing our genes to those of other life forms, we've discovered a lot in common. Humans share 96% of the same genes as chimpanzees, which isn't too surprising. But we also share 85% with mice, 60% with fruit flies, and 50% with bananas. We even have genes in common with bacteria and other single-celled life. This supports what Charles Darwin proposed in his theory of evolution more than 150 years ago. 
all life on Earth is connected and likely traces back to a single ancestor. <laughs> yeah, some of the technology to come out of all this is pretty crazy. Like gene therapy, manipulating our DNA to cure diseases. That can mean turning a defective gene off, swapping a healthy gene in its place, or adding entirely new genes into our DNA. Scientists have been doing that for decades with crops. They can insert specific genes into plants to get better traits, like bigger apples or tomatoes that can grow in colder weather. The results are called genetically modified organisms, or GMOs. Some worry about the damage they might cause to the environment. Like if GMO crops crossbred with plants in nearby fields. That could have unpredictable results. Gene therapy may carry similar risks to our own health. There's still so much we don't understand about DNA. So we need to be careful with these new technologies. Hey, let's see who this curly blonde hair belongs to. It's gonna say Tim every time, isn't it? Visit us at brainpop.com for more on this topic and hundreds of others. You'll find movies, games, quizzes, and activities.